If you look at the map of the United States, you may notice that the state of Oregon has a smaller population compared to the other two western coastal states, even though this state is also one and a half times larger than the state of Washington. The population situation is not like that. The population of Washington state is approximately 7,800,000 people, which ranks it as the 13th most populated state and its population density is 103 people per square mile, giving it a rank of 25 in terms of population density. Additionally, California with a population of 39 million people is considered the most populous state, with a population density of 251 people per square mile and ranks 11th in terms of population density. However, in contrast, the population of Oregon is only 4,200,000 people, ranking it 27th in terms of population and they live at a density of 40 people per square mile, which gives it a rank of 39 as a low density state. So why are there so many empty lands in Oregon compared to the other two states? And even though it is larger than Washington, not many people live in Oregon. Welcome to another video from the Geography Tour channel. The three states of the west coast of the United States have a total of 51 million people in the country, which surpassed California's first population growth in the region. In fact, the California Gold Rush of 1848 drew a large population to the area. A gold rush that began on January 24, 1848, when gold was found by James Marshall at Sutter's Mill in Coloma, California. News of gold brought almost 300,000 people from the west of the United States and abroad to California. And the gold rush also boosted the money supply of the American economy. Also, the sudden increase in population allowed California to quickly become a state in the compromise of 1850. After that, people moved north to discover a better life in the western regions of the United States. And this caused a significant population to arise between these three states. Although, the demographic difference between them is large. Further, did you know that the federal government owns approximately one-third of the land in the United States, which may be the second reason why Oregon has a smaller population than Washington and California despite having a larger land mass? So that 53.2% of the land of this state belong to the federal government, which people do not have the right to own and live on those lands. But in contrast, this figure is less for the other two states. In fact, 28.6% of Washington's land is allocated to the federal government, as well as 45.4% of California's land, although the area of California is almost twice the size of Oregon. Also, if we do not consider the difference in the population of the states of California compared to the other two states, the major historical difference between the two states of Oregon and Washington is the industrial port. Seattle was emerging as a major seaport in the early 20th century, and Washington's population actually doubled in a decade between 1900 and 1910. Large seaports tend to become industrial centers, and Seattle was no exception, especially at the beginning of the interwar period and during World War II, which has led to the fact that today about 60% of Washington's population lives in the Seattle area. Oregon has no comparable seaport with direct access, although Astria, on the coast at the mouth of the Columbia River, is the oldest permanent English-speaking settlement west of the Rocky Mountains. But it is a common misconception that Portland is on the coast, and is actually about 80 miles up the Columbia River, which is the largest freshwater port on the west coast, exporting large quantities of wheat, but not a commercial shipping center like Seattle. Also, since early settlement, Oregon's economy centered around the supply of raw resources such as timber and agricultural products and Portland experienced a steel boom following World War II, but historically, it is not a manufacturing city. Although Oregon has grown slowly and steadily, it has never experienced a major population boom comparable to the ones that fooled the growth of Seattle or the California coast. Also, the tax laws in these three states differ significantly. In Washington state, residents are subject to sales tax and property tax, but they do not have to pay income tax. This means that individuals and businesses in Washington have no state income tax liability, making it an attractive destination for those seeking to avoid this particular tax burden. In contrast, Oregon does not impose a sales tax and allows residents to avoid paying sales tax on purchases, yet Oregon has an income tax, meaning that individuals and businesses in the state are required to pay taxes on their income. On the other hand, California imposes both a sales tax and an income tax 
and California residents are subject to sales tax on their purchases and their income is also subject to the tax, making it one of the highest tax states in the country. With respect to governance and laws, Washington has taken the lead in developing the initiate process compared to other states. And the initiate process allows citizens to propose and vote on new laws by bypassing the state legislature. And this mechanism gives Washington citizens more direct participation in the legislative process. Additionally, Washington's land use laws are relatively more flexible than Oregon's. And this flexibility allows for potentially more lenient regulations on development and land use which may provide certain benefits to property owners and developers in the state. Oregon has experienced negative net migration in recent years, while Washington saw positive net migration in 2022. For example, Oregon has witnessed a positive net migration of 17,000 years, and it was positive 506 people in 2021. And in 2022, this positive number was 83,347. Washington, on the other hand, is ranked as one of the fastest growing states in the country for young people, boasting a youth population growth of more than 2% and the fourth highest housing price. You may also be curious about the reasons for Oregon's negative net immigration and Washington's positive net immigration. Oregon's population decline may be at least partially attributable to a lack of affordable housing. Conversely, Washington's attractiveness for more people to migrate can be attributed to its relatively better housing conditions and opportunities, which make it an attractive destination for people seeking better prospects and quality of life. Therefore, reasons such as excessive appropriation of the lands of the state of Oregon by the federal government and the absence of important ports in this state have caused it to have a smaller population than the other two states. Of course, the tax system and housing prices have caused the state of Oregon to register a negative net migration and many people migrate from this state due to low income and lack of cheap housing. In the end, I suggest you the video why Wyoming is empty, which is the same as the topic of this video. Thank you very much for being with me until the end of the video and see you until the next video.